Tense, aspect, mood. What are they? When describing languages and how they work, you'll frequently find yourself using these important but pernickety terms, so it's important to understand what they mean. Let's start with the easiest one, and the one you could probably explain yourself. Tense. Put simply, tense has to do with time. When did an action happen? Tenses can be absolute, indicating a time in comparison only to the present moment. They can also be relative, where one event is compared to another. An example of a relative tense is the pluperfect, e.g. I had eaten. By contrast, the simple past I ate gives no specific information besides the fact that it occurred before the present moment. So that's simple enough. The next concept on the list, aspect, is trickier. It's also to do with time, and the border between what constitutes a tense and what constitutes an aspect is sometimes blurry. Unlike tense, which describes when something happened, aspect shows various things including the completeness of an action, and whether it has any internal time structure. By that, I mean whether an action is presented as a simple unitary whole, or an ongoing process. Whether in the words of grammarians, it is perfective or imperfective. Compare the sentences, I was going, and I went. Both are past tense, but the first is continuous, and indicates that the process was not yet complete, while the second action is an indivisible unit that took place. You could call the first sentence imperfective, and the second perfective, but there are others too. Take the phrase, I used to go, which is a good example of a different aspect that is not only past tense, but implies that the action of going was habitual and done regularly. Aspects don't always line up easily from language to language, and the terminology does vary. Finally, there's mood. This is all to do with how a sentence relates to reality. In other words, is this sentence actually describing something which the speaker knows to be true? Moods can be broadly categorised as realis or irrealis. The former indicates a statement of fact, and the latter a broad array of non-factual statements, including hopes, questions, and possibilities. As far as subcategorization is concerned, realis moods generally just fall into the indicative. An example of an indicative sentence in English would be, I go to the store. Since it's just a plain statement of fact, nothing special there, it's what the speaker knows to be true. Then we have irrealis moods, which cover a far broader range of meaning, but basically refer to any statements that aren't necessarily factual, whether that's because this statement is a question, a command, or a wish, or any other factor for that matter. There are many subcategories. There's the imperative, go to the store, and the interrogative, do you go to the store? In the first sentence, the speaker very much wants you to go to the shop, most likely because you haven't. In the second, you may well have been to the shop, but the speaker doesn't know that, hence why they're asking the question. So both moods are irrealis. Other moods include the conditional, which in English is usually conveyed with words like would and if to show that one action depends on another. Or the optative, which is not in English, but expresses a hope for the future. There are plenty of other moods expressing a wide variety of concepts, Although I've used English examples to explain these moods, it's worth saying that English itself only has three. The indicative, the imperative, and something called the subjunctive. We count English as possessing only these three, since to convey the meanings of other moods, it relies on modal verbs – should, would, might, used to, etc. It's also important to remember that the neat division which I've made here, between aspects and tenses, doesn't always apply. Languages often blend them together in different ways. Some languages have verb forms specifically for the past tense plus the imperfective aspect, while some don't allow certain aspects to be used with certain tenses, and vice versa.